Preparing the statement of cash flows through the indirect method begins with net income. Net income, which is an accrual amount, is then adjusted to obtain net cash flow from operating activities, which is a cash basis amount. Adjustments, whether additions or subtractions, are necessary for each item on the income statement that does not wholly or partially represent a cash item. Preparing the statement of cash flows through the indirect method requires pulling information from the income statement and the balance sheet. For example, the increase or decrease to accounts receivable is something that can be computed by comparing last year to this year's balance sheet. On the other hand, the amount of depreciation and net income comes from the income statement. Suppose Joe's Farms Inc. needs to prepare its statement of cash flows using the balance sheet and the income statement. Using the indirect method to prepare the statement of cash flows, the company starts with the $11,000 figure for net income. It will then adjust for depreciation expense of $8,000, the increase in accounts receivable of $13,000, the increase in inventory of $10,000, and the increase in accounts payables of $5,000. The logic of the indirect method is that if a company had an $8,000 depreciation expense on the income statement, this expense would cause net income to decrease by $8,000, but no cash was actually paid out. Therefore, the indirect method would add back $8,000 to net income in order to arrive at cash flows from operating activities. Similarly, if the company had an increase in accounts receivable during the year of $13,000, this would mean that $13,000 of sales revenue was not for cash, and therefore the net income figure overstates cash by $13,000. In that case, we will subtract $13,000 from the net income to arrive at cash flows from operating activities. After determining the net cash flow from operating activities, the next step is to obtain cash flows from investing activities. This process is the same for both the indirect and the direct methods of preparing the statement of cash flows. Investing activities often include free cash flow, which is the discretionary cash flow amount available for purchasing additional investments, retiring debt, or increasing company liquidity. Investing cash inflows for this section include cash from the sale of property, plant, and equipment, cash from the sale of debt or equity securities of other entities, and cash from the collection of principal and loans to other entities. Investing cash outflows for this section include cash used to purchase property, plant, and equipment, cash used to purchase debt or equity securities of other entities, and cash used to make loans to other entities. For this specific company, the only investing activity in this period was $5,000 of cash spent to purchase a building. Financing activities are determined next and generally include cash changes in long-term liability and equity items. Financing cash inflows for this section include cash from the sale of equity securities and cash from the issuance of debt, such as notes and bonds. Financing cash outflows for this section include cash paid to stockholders in the form of dividends and cash used to redeem long-term debt or reacquire stock. For this specific company, financing activities included $20,000 of cash received from the sale of common stock and $11,000 of cash paid to shareholders in dividends. After determining the three cash flow activity sections, operating, investing, and financing, the amounts are summed. The net cash change amount over the year was $5,000, which agrees with the difference between the 2020 and 2021 cash balance from the balance sheet.